and girls getting down on the bar. You can have a lot of fun. All right. Well, welcome, everybody. I'm Karen Lego, marketing director for Profinium, and I'm excited to have these guys out in the middle of beautiful farm country uh, right before uh, season kind of harvest season kicks off, though it's got a ways to go, so we'll have some time. Uh, but, Andy, yes. you have some fun news and somebody that we're excited to introduce. I am very excited to introduce. Uh, we, we recently hired Mr. David Thamert. Um, comes with a number of years of ag banking experience in the Otana community and uh, the, like the 30 or 40 miles surrounding um, communities within Otana. Um, a large network of, of farmers and customers, um, a portfolio that he comes with. So we're really excited to have him be part of the Profinium team. It's awesome. been fun. It's been a fun week. Well, likewise, it's been it's been fun joining the team. I'm only in my second week, but uh, so far, very excited, and we're having a lot of fun. Yep. That's awesome. So. Awesome. Very cool. Well, what made you decide to come over to Profinium? You know, I think Andy and I had worked together um, for a number of years at, at another local bank. And I think it's just, it's all about the people. I mean, one bank to the next, we really have the same product lineup for the most part. It's really about working with good people and being able to really provide a world-class experience uh, for your customers. And it's just every day, I, you just kind of get up thinking, what can I do for my customers, help them be successful, um, and just... I've kept in touch with Andy a lot over the last 10 years and I have seen Profinium has b really been a market leader in, in bringing, uh, doing deals in, in Owatonna that's helped the community prosper, helped the customers be successful. And I just thought at, at this point, this is a good stage where I think I can, I can really help st some, some local farmers uh, achieve their dreams too. Awesome. And so let's go a little bit into your background. Yes. Yeah. So you are also farm child yourself, just like I am. I am. I am. I grew up, uh, a lot of people already know this, but I grew up uh, just outside of Owatonna on a large dairy farm. There was eight of us kids. Um, so I grew up there, you know, went to college, came back, ended up, I uh, always had the plan of moving to a big city and working in investment finance or something. And um, But really, as it turns out, wanted to raise a family. Uh, in a small town, Owatonna is as, as good as any small town out there. Awesome place to raise family. Yeah. And, you know, in Owatonna, uh, working in finance, for a lot of it just means ag. You know, it's mm -hmm. it's still an ag-based community at its roots. And it's uh, it's a lot of what I knew, what I'm comfortable in. And so it's been rewarding. I I think this is 17 or 18 years working in, in ag banking in the local market. And I uh, just like, love what I do. So it's one of your favorite farm stories as a kid. <laughs> oh boy, um, that we can share with everybody. <laughs> you know, just I, just you know, a lot of good memories growing up um, on a farm, baling hay in the summer. I, I, I still think back to just you know, we'd we'd have a big field to, to bale the hay in the day, and my dad would say, you know, if we can get all the work done before sundown, we'll go fishing up in Faribault. And I just remember everybody'd kind of pool together, work together. We'd have two or three of the kids up in the hay mile, two or three driving hay racks, a couple of us on the baler. And um, yeah, just a lot of good memories of eight kids out on the farm working together. And, um, and, and here we are. Here we are. You know, my dad asked me to help bale hay one time when yeah. I was driving the tractor. He never asked me to do it again. <laughs> Maybe you popped It's kind of like laundry. <laughs> The tricky thing about bailing is to let the clutch off softly so the guy in the rack doesn't fall off the back. That is probably why, because he yeah. was the one on the back, so it's probably exactly what was My going on. My sister had the same short rope. She had about 30 minutes of drive and she was gone. <laughs> Displaced worker. No, but, you know, I think, I think anybody watching this video that grew up on a farm or around a farm, you know, you just... You get inundated with all these great memories growing up on a yeah. farm, and it's just, it's fun now. Now, I'm, I'm not a farmer. I don't live on the farm anymore. But uh, being able to kind of be in a different role and still being out on farms, we still, still do a lot of them. Andy and I were out, I think, at two different farms yesterday. We are out at a farm early this morning. Um, just love getting out, really understanding what our customer's operation is, um, understanding where we can fit in and offer some of the bank services and products and just kind of help each other be successful. Mm -hmm. You know, if our whole purpose is achieving dreams together. And that doesn't yeah. mean just here's a product, here you go. But no, we're actually going to help you get there. Like, yeah, let's do this. No, and that's awesome. the thing. It's This is this business isn't selling. This business is really understanding your customers. And each each customer is so unique. 
um, enough of my friends kind of know me in the community. They go, how are, how are farmers doing? It's a tough thing, and I, I try not to answer that question because I, I try not to make two farms aren't the same. Yeah, Each right. one, we know their family yeah. dynamics. Um, we know their, their operational dynamics. And, and we keep that close to the vest. You know, privacy and confidentiality is really, really an important thing for the families that we serve. And uh, we respect that, but we just love doing what we do. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Very cool. You know, and did you have a, what's like the favorite part of working with the ag community? You touched base a little bit on it, but any other favorite part? You know, I, I think it's just um, your knowledge keeps growing. You know, I, I learned so much from my customers and hopefully you can you can bring some of the, what you know to them at times. I think you never get to the point where you go, I got this figured out. It's it's because you're not doing the same thing. The the farmers that I've worked with over my, my career, so much of your business is dependent on the weather, the markets. Um, those are probably the two of the main things. Uh, and then you have all the other drivers. And so it's it's a constantly evolving thing. So you really need to stay sharp. And I think I, I've surrounded myself with some really good farm operators over the years that I've learned a lot. And again, hopefully you can kind of give some of that back. So I, I think my favorite thing is just no two days are alike. Right. Niche yeah. enterprise is really different, right? It is. I mean, whether you're is. growing corn, beans, raising livestock, cattle, hogs, dairy. Yeah. Every enterprise is really different. You really need a specialist in those roles to understand exactly what's going on. You know, and I think, Andy, too, I, one of the things that really attract me th with Profinium is that the last couple of years, Andy has talked about, really our philosophy is we always start with a yes. You know, so if your customer has a need, let's start with a yes, because most of the time there's a way to do this. There's usually a, uh, uh, there's usually a way to help the customer. Right. And... But by, by dealing with maybe a few less, you know, I, I really, over my career, I've only typically worked with 20 to 40 farm families at a time. Mm -hmm. So we don't pride ourselves that we that we work with the masses. We don't pride ourselves that we're the biggest. But I think for the customers that we are working with at that specific time, I think we can give them world-class service. Yeah. I really do. Very specialized um, advice, services, and products that are very direct to their enterprise, their farm, or their situation. So. Right. Very customized experience. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Very cool. Yep. Very cool. All right. So who has been the most important person in your life? <laughs> <laughs> Better say my wife. Because <laughs> that's the truth. Uh, Better mom, right? Yeah. You know, you know I think it's have, growing up with good parents, I think, is, is, is a big deal. So I, for me, I'll let Andy answer. For me, it's probably not one person. But growing up in a good uh, family environment with good morals and ethics, uh, was really a good jump start. Um, but now, you know, as, as you get on your own, I got uh, my wife of many years and, and four young kids. I think it's just uh, that same thing. I'd say for me, it's probably more family than it is any one person. Yeah. It's a tough question to, to answer. Mm -hmm. I mean, each one of us probably have had, I don't know, five to six or two, maybe up to 10 people that have really been influential on your life as you, mm -hmm. as you grow through it. Obviously, your parents are, as David mentioned, are critical, you know, to making sure that uh, you, you learn how to get up and work hard and earn it every single day. And I think my dad probably taught me the best. He was in the construction <laughs> yeah. industry for mm -hmm. 40 years. Right. Man, talk about a guy waking up early, coming, waking up early and getting home late. I mean, Good not a dairy mind. farmer, but uh, pretty close. <laughs> it's a close second, I guess. So um, I would say it's probably my dad. Awesome. I mean, it totally is a loaded question, and even asking it now, I'm like, I agree. I'm like, I don't even like this question, so I'm going <laughs> to not use that question anymore. Because everybody that I believe that everybody that comes into your life comes into your life for a reason to right. make an impact of whatever sort of meaning it's they're supposed to have in your life. Right. So, so okay, we're going to switch a little bit. We're going to keep the questions going, but we're going to do more rapid fire, like 50 questions sort of thing. So, Andy, we're going to start with you. Okay, far away. <laughs> Let's see how this goes. <laughs> All right. This is going to be fun. Okay. okay. What is your favorite form of exercise? Uh, running. Ah, what sound do you love? The sound of waves in the ocean. Mm. If you could choose to stay a certain age forever, what age would it be? Probably 22. <laughs> <laughs> Just legal enough to drink. <laughs> Still in shape. Nice. In my prime. <laughs> if you could meet anyone, living or dead, who would you meet? Oh, Jesus. Okay. 
how do you top that? Right? <laughs> yeah, we won't want to ask that one. Okay, if you... Uh, let's see here. Oh, this is a good one. What do you want to be when you grow up? Oh, boy, when I grow up... Still thinking about that one? Yeah, I am, you know. Uh, a good person. Nice. All right, being a tough macho guy, this one's going to be fun. What was the last movie, TV show, or book that made you cry or tear up? Ooh, that's a good one. It probably wasn't that long ago. I've been an emotional wreck lately. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, we watched a... Uh, I can't even remember the name of it. It was uh, was probably it a, a dog show. Yeah, it was a Disney show. It's like okay. a dog's life or something like that, <laughs> oh, where yeah. these dogs, you watch them as they age, and then they slowly leave your life. And, yeah. Mm -hmm. Not cool. I mean, I got a dog that's eight. <laughs> you know, and she's, she's in her... She's not in her prime, but she's kind of, you know, she's aging gracefully, I like to say. And, uh, you know, someday we're going to have to make the difficult decision to, to move on. But, um, you know, for now, we, we, we come home and say, hey, Tink, and pet her on her head and, and uh, enjoy enjoy the company. Oh, Even that will just get me tear up. Yeah. Your first note is awful. Yeah. Oh, anyways, okay, so let's go to, okay. What do you miss most about being a kid? Uh, the lack of responsibility. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, what's the best part of waking up? Having air in my lungs. <laughs> nice. Start being able to start a day. Nice. You know? Last one. Yeah. What are you most excited about at this moment? Having David Thamer on, on board at <laughs> yes. the Finium. You know, um, it, it's, uh, it opens up a whole new um, avenue of, of market for us and customers and, and things like that. So I'm excited. Yeah. And I'll jump on that. Uh, two questions ago, you kind of asked about your favorite thing about coming in. You know, I've, I've only been to Profinium at my second, end of my second week here, but I can tell you, I mean, I keep my door open during the day. The amount of energy that's that's in that building and just, there's there's so many things going on with, with the construction project, uh, of course, but there's so many people that are, they're coming in to drop off papers or to see Andy or schedule an appointment with Derek or do, there's just, there's so much activity and so much positivity. And the other thing that I just see that I'm excited about is it just seems like everybody knows each other. They're excited that they came back in. Maybe haven't seen you since Monday, and I'm just impressed with the the personal uh, the personal approach that everybody has. Mm -hmm. So I just encourage anybody that hasn't been in to you know acknowledge that atmosphere. Come on in and see us because it's it's really fun. It is fun for sure. Cool. All right. Are you I ready feel like something's you? coming. My way. <laughs> <laughs> ready That's for right. your 50 questions? Yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> okay. Uh, what is one of your favorite quotes? Um, you know, my brother, I got an older brother, John, that always says everything comes out in the wash. And mm -hmm. I think that's, that's probably a model that I live by. I don't get caught up in nickels and dimes. I try to just, uh, you know, you don't get too high, don't get too low. I, I think those quotes kind of all merge in. Don't get caught up in the details. Love it. Love it. What chore do you absolutely hate doing? Probably cleaning bathrooms. But, uh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> you know, at, at home, I got to hand it to my wife. We have a pretty good system of there's jobs she likes, there's jobs I like, and then there's jobs that we both work together on. But that's probably one that she, um, I think neither of us really likes. So. Delegated to the kids. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. Favorite indoor or outdoor activity? Um, I'd say camping with my family. That's kind of uh, our getaway where we, we can unplug. Awesome. Uh, what is your least favorite mode of transportation? Train. I would say yeah. camel. You know, sometimes we. On a camel. <laughs> the pair. <laughs> the pair. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, because it just keeps going around in circles. It never <laughs> takes you to go get mini donuts or anything. What I can think of is a few times that we'll go, we'll go up to the cities for a twins game or something like that. We'll get on the metro line. Mm -hmm. and, it, and the kids love it because being raised in Owatonna, that's kind of, a, it's a big city of thing you get to go experience. But usually as I sit there, I think if I didn't have the kids with me, I wouldn't be here. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> right? Random thought. Random thought. <laughs> if you could learn to do anything, what would it be? Uh, walk on stilts, I suppose. Huh? Yeah, I was, I, just, I was at an impasse for an idea. When so. was the last time you had an amazing meal? You know, um, I, I'll throw, throw one out to my son here. The other day we were leaving for work, got really busy, and I said, Jack, I just need you to figure out dinner and get it get get chicken going in the crock pot. And he's like, how do I do that? I'm like, you can't mess up chicken in the crock pot. Just make sure it's on high for six hours. You'll be good. And I came home, and I got a hand of the kid. He made an amazing meal. He's 13 years old, and we all yeah. liked it. So I was happy awesome. with that. Very cool. Very cool. 
What was your first recollection of money? You know, it's um, it's funny. We were just talking about this at, at, at a family event the other day, but I had a, I had a great uncle that lived uh, down in Waldorf. He lived on the second level of a downtown building, and the first level was the Waldorf General Store. And I was probably five years old or so, and me and a couple of my siblings, um, we were there to visit Great Uncle Joe. And so we go through the Waldorf store, and he says, pick out a candy each. So we each picked out a candy, and he put them up on the front counter, and he said to the lady, put it on my tab. And then he proceeded to walk up the staircase to their apartment, and I just thought, this guy must be a millionaire. Because we just got something, and he didn't put any cash on it. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know, that's probably my first recollection of credit. Oh, yeah. And I nice. just thought, but when you're five years old, you think, this guy must own the world, because... Yeah. I just got a tube of Necco wafers, and I didn't have to cough up any money. And um, so, yeah, it was probably my first my first uh, experience with credit. Now that I know, he probably had to come down and settle his tab up later on. But when you're a kid, you don't think about all that. That's awesome. <laughs> I love it. All right. Uh, where's Waldo? Where's Waldo? Well, I'm Waldo because uh, at, at Halloween, I actually dressed up as Waldo. True story, just this last year. And it's about 10 o'clock, and my daughter and son were at a, at a school event, a Halloween party. So it's about 10 o'clock, and my wife's like, hey, the kids just texted, ready to be picked up. So I hop in my truck, um, Halloween night, I'm at a stoplight right downtown Owatonna. Car pulls up next to me, a bunch of high school kids, and all I heard is, found them! <laughs> <laughs> yes. I loved it. That's at first awesome. I said, what? Oh, I'm Waldo! <laughs> it was fun. That's the best. <laughs> Found them. <gosh. laughs> There's going to be your hashtag right there. Found them. <laughs> All right. Last question that we're going to ask, we're going to close this out with this question. What are you most excited about at this moment? Like I said, you know, Andy and I have been having a lot of fun the last couple of days. I know I'm just onboarding, and, and obviously the, the, the rally is going to come, and it's time to get down to work, you know, it, but I, I like what I do. I really do. Um, what I'm excited about is just, we've been out yesterday, we're out uh, today meeting with a few customers, farm customers, prospects, um, just really spending time without having these huge expectations. Just Let's just simplify this. Stop out, talk to good people. Yeah. Ask, you know, what are your what are your objectives? What are you trying to achieve? Is there a part that we can play to kind of help you out with that? Yep. And if, if there's a fit there, let them know, here's the information we need to gather, get back to the bank, do our thing, and then come back to them with a couple of options. Here's how we think we can help you and add some value. It's just really fun. So cool. Any last words? Otherwise, you know, it's nice. You know, I've been sitting in the shade, and we've definitely put Dave in the hot seat, yeah, in the hot blazing fine. sun. That's fine. So any last last comments or anything from you two before we wrap it up? No, I'm just really excited to, to see what the future brings at Perfinium. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, the next five to ten years, it's going to be a, a lot of uh, a lot of fun for us. So I'm looking for forward to it. Yeah, I just want to say, I mean, I'm I'm a very approachable person. I grew up on a on a dairy farm here in Owatonna. Um, I'm raising my family right here in Owatonna. Um, very approachable. So if you know me, uh, you know how to get a hold of me or stop in to see us. Um, see see what we're all about. We'd love to talk with you. So awesome. Thank you both for coming you. out, hanging out in the Thanks for having us out, out in the yard. So, we'll see you all later. Boys and girls getting down on the farm.